Hello and welcome to this edition of Bayou Time. I'm your host, Keith Weissite, licensed clinical social worker with Terrebonne Home Care. Very glad that you're joining us. Very glad to be here with you and very glad to have with us Chairwoman Jessica Domingue. Jessica, welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, next to her, the Vice Chair, John Amundi. John, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks, Keith. We're glad to be here. All right. Well, I know we got a whole lot going on. Let's talk about some of the things that y'all are dealing with, John. Well, first of all, I just want to let the public know that for this week's meeting, we will be at the school board office again because right. our council meeting room's getting a little bit of a rehaul. Yeah, a little we, facelift uh, there. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying to put some new audiovisual equipment. That way the, the public can hear when we're um, uh, putting out the live shows. Right. A lot of the complaints that we had was they were, they were able to see us well, but they weren't able to hear everything that we were saying. So we're going to have a little state-of-the-art upgrade, and uh, mm. hopefully that's going to work out well for us. That's exciting. And it's been a long time coming too, right? Yeah, it has it been is. a very long it time. Is. Yeah. And we want to make sure that everybody hears uh, okay. what's going on. Okay. But you know, Keith, the uh, this week in our meetings, you know, most of what we're doing is procedural stuff. Right. Uh, beginning of the year, getting all those contracts put in place, all the people that do the different things throughout the year. But I, I do want to touch on a couple of things. Um, in our public services meeting, we're going to be uh, authorizing the parish president to execute a contract with LA Contracting for a long awaited public uh, police presence on the east side. Oh, wow. They're, they're going to be building a, a public safety uh, substation. And I know our colleague, John Navy, who served 11 years, just recently resigned. He probably started talking about that from day one. Yeah, as and, soon and, as he got on the council. Mm -hmm. And we always mention how government moves slow. Well, that's an example of how it moves slow. There's so many working pieces that we have to put together right. from acquisition of the properties to the architects, them doing the design, and then go and find the, the funding to do it. Right. Um, and now we finally see that coming to a head, and, and I think that's going to be good for the east side of Homa. With that new subdivision on Parkwood Place, I think that'll give people of that area confidence in the response time that's mm -hmm. necessary uh, right. whenever they're going to have a situation that they need need yeah. that. Well, and you know what? Quite frankly, it it sometimes it just takes that long for us to be able to see where the priority is. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that you guys have to talk about every meeting. Where's our priority? Where do we use these funds? And and if is it earmarked for something else? And so we can ask for those things, but, but a lot of times it takes a while to come to fruition. We're just glad that John had to, uh, the foresight to kind of see that it was needed and uh, now that it's happening. So it's exciting. It is. It absolutely is. Another thing that we're doing, and if uh, Joe Boudreaux is out there watching, uh, his good, good old boy Phil is about to be removed from Bayou Terrebonne. <laughs> That's an okay. inside joke. Okay. And uh, there's a, a lot of debris from the storm that blew into, mm -hmm. the, into the bayou. We have a contract to dredge the bayou, but once that debris flew in, then we have to get that out before the dredging contract can uh, move forward. Right. So we've signed a contract on that, uh, or we're authorizing the signing of the contract on that to the lowest bidder it just bid last week, and that'll finally get moving. Mm -hmm. Again, we're how far out from Ida? 18 yeah. months. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. Um, this project's just just getting started. But again, it's part of the process. I right. tell people all the time, I said, you know, I voted for transparency and accountability in government, so I'm probably the fault because now I've created more hoops that government has to jump through, but it's what we, what we do, it's what we want. We want to make sure that government is spending that money properly and not just going out building some unnecessary things. Right, Jess? Right, and you know, part of that process and part of uh, most of our recovery processes, we have to follow the FEMA guidelines or we won't be reimbursed on anything. And so this is one of those projects as well that we had to follow um, the guidelines put forth by FEMA as well as, um, you know, the federal government and things as, as that. Right. So um, it, it just, it, it complicated things even more. And as you know, government works slow, like, like John said. Um, but all of these things, you know, uh, we talked last last time about um, repairing our street lights and things like that. Um, it's all in the process of about to start. It's just because we had to follow those FEMA guidelines um, 
to be able to be reimbursed because there's no way the parish would have the budget to be able to um, to fix all these things. Yeah, and so when you have a uh, kind of a broken system from a really big hurricane, again, we got to prioritize. The street mm -hmm. lights are one of those things that are, you know, we got to get people back in their homes. We got to support other areas. And then we want to want to go ahead and dredge the, the bayou, right? But we got to get the debris out of the way first. Mm -hmm. So we got to, we got to, we got to, can't put the cart before the horse. Right. You know, it's funny that you, you mentioned the uh, the street lights because I think that's one of the things that we still get numerous phone calls on. Right. Um, and, and those contracts are out there. Um, EP Bro is going to be going through. I think one of the things that was probably most interesting, and I think Chairwoman Domain can attest to, is that we learned the difference between decorative and non-decorative lights. We didn't realize. We thought decorative lights were those nice little beautiful short decorative poles in, in some of the subdivisions that non-decorative would be like the standard aluminum pole. Well, those are all decorative lights. A non-decorative light is a light that's on a wooden pole. Oh, so, right. see, I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. A little education for me as well. Mm -hmm. Well, that made a difference in the process that Ms. Domain was talking about mm -hmm. because right. they had to go through and assess every one of those poles for any type of damage, whether they were leaning, whether the globe was broken or what have you, mm -hmm. and then they had to put that all together in a report, which I saw, which was about two inches thick, mm -hmm. and then um, put that into a bid package, make sure FEMA was okay with how it was all done, right? and then now the contract's on and the work's going to begin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of it is needs assessment. We have to figure out what is the need. We got to make sure that it's written correctly, that it's all in the right language mm -hmm. so that we get the approval for it. Let's talk about some of these recreation changes and kind of what we figured out, what we wanted some transparency, but we also wanted some uniformity to what happened in that process. Well, Keith, one of the items on our Wednesday agenda this week is where we're creating a subcommittee for recreation. If you remember, Chairwoman Domang had proposed the Recreation Modernization Task Force, and this is a result of the findings of that task force. Okay. We just recently passed a, a policy and procedure manual for the recreation dis, uh, district so that we, we can have some consistency, some uniformity across all of them so that they're operating in the same manner. Right. That, that provides a lot of transparency with those districts. And we're gonna be creating this task force and, and what it does is it creates a point of contact between the council who oversees the recreation districts and the districts, someone that they know directly who to come to to ask for help and assistance in, in, in implementing this task force. And Chairman, this is one of those things that we saw early on that we needed to have a little different process for, right? Correct, correct. This was something that, um, you know, I jumped full, um, full force in whenever I first took office because it was one of the things that I was very passionate about. You know, I have, I have small kids and so I wanted to make recreation in this parish better. Um, we didn't foresee what the first couple years of our term was going to be like and so it took a little longer sure. um, like to, everything, to, right? to get off the ground right. than what we originally thought. But we did pass um, the policy and procedure manual uh, January 1, which we're all very, very proud of. Um, mm. And like John says, it provides consistency um, so that all the boards are going to look the same and all the boards are going to operate the same. And it's also going to be, um, it's going to save the boards a lot of money because mm. they'll be able to team up with other boards maybe whenever they're ordering uniforms or they're ordering supplies or, or whatever that is. And so it's just going to help um, drive the parish forward and make us look um, like a more modern um, uh, area than you know what has been done in the past for right. so long, and so part of that was we did uh, we are going to create this subcommittee um, that way, you know, like he said, they've got someone to come to, um, you know, administration um, maybe have a concern of something. In the past, they didn't know who, even who to ask. And so this way, they'll know exactly where to go. And I'm actually going to appoint um, John um, Amity to be the chairman of this one. I think he's going to be um, a really great leader. And I think that he's going to um, be able to, you know, lead us in the right direction. And this is really to, to help us set up for the next council, because as you know, um, recreation districts fall under the council. And right. so really and truly, um, we make all the decisions and all, um, uh, you know, any laws or anything that have to do with recreation, it goes directly through the council. And so ultimately it's our authority. And so right. we do need to um, work on that. And John and I have talked about you know, setting this up now so that 
for next term, we can really have a good foundation. And having a liaison to address some of the good things that are happening. Let's talk about some of the good things that are happening with recreation. Even uh, with uh, this week, we've got some big things happening with low groundbreaking, right? Yeah, there's actually a groundbreaking today um, at Bayou Country. Um, we are actually doing a, um, a big expansion of our soccer fields as well as new lighting. Um, we're groundbreaking on some beach volleyball courts, some new parking lots. Um, it's a $2.4 million pro project um, funded through state capital outlay. Um, Mr. Uh, Tanner, McG Tanner McGee did a really good job of getting that money for us. Championing and that. yes, he's, he's been a champion of recreation for sure. Mm -hmm. We're lucky to have him. Um, so that's going to be a really exciting project, especially for um, for children in the area and families to be able to utilize that facility a little bit more. And we, we have big dreams and hopes for that, um, that facility. And so hopefully this is just the beginning of moving forward on some big projects over there. Some excitement, huh, John? Absolutely. And you know, Keith, if you ever take a drive down Coto Road at the intersection of Bayou Gardens extension, mm -hmm. if you take a look out, you see some construction being done. That's another thing. You heard a lot about quality of life. Right. Well, I, I really work to encourage Recreation District 1 to build what I consider a quality of life park. It's a park with no ball fields. Right. It's a park with what they're going to have here is putt-putt golf. They're going to have okay. a splash park. They've got a walking track. They're doing a dog park. You can fish around the area. There's green space in case you want to do a pickup flag football. Um, they're eventually going to have pavilions where you can do concerts, whatever you want to do. And, and that's, like Jessica's talking about, is part of our vision of the future. Mm -hmm. um, really getting into the community, doing some quality of life things, as well as keeping recreation alive. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our future projects is to eventually um, have the air base as a sister of the Bayou Country Sports Park. Oh, so that wow. way we've got things throughout the parish so the people from down the bayous don't necessarily have to come all the way to the west side and the right. people from you know, Shriver and Gibson don't have to go all the way um, to the east side. So it'll be kind of split and working good for everybody. You know, it's really interesting. I kind of, we talk all the time about the revitalization of downtown and mm -hmm. our focal point there. This is exciting because we can see that a lot of these parks and these recreation areas are getting revitalized. We're, we're really being able to envision a better way than we've ever had it before. So it's just really cool to see all these different districts getting uh, some assistance with that. Yeah, you know, Keith, Chairwoman Domain mentioned the, the uh, modernization, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the future. Yeah. and bringing it up to speed to where it should be. I love it. Uh, just some final thoughts as we close here. Uh, yeah, no, and I, I can um, you know speak for myself and speak for some of the other council members as well. We're all um, individually doing our own recreation projects in our districts also. Right. And so I've got two really big projects in District 5 um, that we're working on. We're working on um, Shady Oaks Park, a big um, uh, transformative project there, and we're also working on um, the Homa Heights project, which should be groundbreaking in about April. Um, so we've got a lot of really great things happening around the parish. So, and so we just want to focus on that. So exciting. Thank you both for joining us. We appreciate you, it so Keith. very much. Thank All right, guys, that'll do it for this particular segment of Bayou Time. Don't go anywhere. A whole lot more when we continue right here on HTV.